Good evening, everybody. We're doing the reseller six pack tonight. It is our eleventh episode, and you might be wondering where Jory is. Um, I jumped onto his channel. Uh, he had a family emergency pop up uh, about 30, 45 minutes ago, so um, he couldn't make it, unfortunately. So uh, everybody keep uh, Jory and his family in your thoughts. But we are still here. We're still going to do the show. Um, it so far is a reseller four pack right now, but we will probably have some other people joining us as the show goes along. And we're going to be talking a few different things tonight, uh, mainly fourth quarter prep and bulk buying. But first, we'll go around, introduce everybody, and tell us what you're drinking. Tanya, let's start with you. Hey, guys. I'm Tanya, Thrifty Treasures here on YouTube, and I am drinking an Abita Purple Haze this evening. Okay, I'll go next. Uh, hey, guys. I am Lonnie, a.k.a. Garage Flips. I am drinking Abita also. This is blueberry wheat. And Ooh. it is pretty... Friggin' tasty. I'm drinking out of my Garage Flips mug that John gave me. Thank you, John. And awesome. cheers. Cheers. Man, it is really, really refreshing, yet still... Refreshing beers usually are, like, really light, but this one has a little body to it, so I'm kind of digging it. I kind of like it. Yeah, it looks like you've already put away almost one. <laughs> no, it's just the size of this mug. Oh, yeah, that's great. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. You're right. Well, I guess that's me, huh? Yeah. Uh, hello. <laughs> I'm Dwayne Hale, Mothership Products, um, and I am drinking a Belgian f Fat Tire Ale. It's out of Very nice. Colorado. Very good, good, uh, good beer. So, my dad loves that beer. Yeah, it's good stuff. What about you, John? I am drinking Miller Lite again out <laughs> of my red mug that Andy got me. Uh, I'm staying with my mom and stepdad because Whitney and I's house isn't done yet. And he's got a fridge completely packed full of Miller Lite. So I'm taking advantage of that situation. <laughs> Very nice. Hey, when is yep. your house supposed to be done? Roughly. I mean, I wish, soon? I wish I knew. It was roughly supposed to be done a month ago. Oh, okay. It's one of those yeah. things. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my lord! Yeah. I am I am logged into my eBay product videos channel right now. I just realized <laughs> that. <laughs> oh god! Are you commenting in the chat from that? Yes, that's my account that I use to post uh, videos, like into my eBay auctions, and I'm logged into that. I don't know why. It's <laughs> so dumb. Stop swamp. Oh, that that's your trolling account, huh? I see. <laughs> yeah, I see. Now you're busted, buddy. <laughs> Damn, I'm but I'm outed right here on this show. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so let's start with fourth quarter prep uh jory came up with this topic and it's definitely a good one because it's august right now and i guess fourth quarter is what like a month away or two months away yeah when does fourth quarter start like october october i think yeah so oh, i guess it's two months know. away i don't know i guess it, it really kind of depends no. on how because i know a lot of people that that don't say that Yes, fourth quarter, but they usually count fourth quarter like November to Jan or to you know first of February because of that overflow on January. So, but yeah, truly fourth quarter is what September to or October to December. I, yeah, I mean my sales stay strong all the way into February. Yeah, that's after, what I mean. It's kind of overflows there. So. So, uh, what, do y'all have any good talking points for uh, preparing for fourth quarter? Um, well, I would just say, like with eBay and Etsy and Amazon, just get as much inventory as you can listed right now. That should be everybody's main focus is just listing, listing, listing. Yeah, I was going to say that's the only thing I ever, I you know, I don't go out and, and specifically buy things for fourth quarter. I just ramp up my listing. Um, and in hopes to uh, catch that wave. As Nathan says, Rudd Nickerson resales, if you do not list on eBay, you cannot sell on eBay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> yeah, I, I just got through um, today. I was moving from a 10 by 10 to a 10 by 20 storage unit. And I just got through about an hour and a half ago. And um, guys, I would say more than half of the stuff I have 
is not listed. So as of right now, I am not prepared for fourth quarter. Well, you've got some time. You got a little bit of time. Yeah, but I mean, I got to get off my ass. Do you, do you, how much stuff do y'all have that's not listed? I'm curious. <laughs> a ton. <laughs> <laughs> um, I probably only have like 100, 150 pieces, maybe. Wow. Only? <laughs> well, trust me, when you hear what these other two people have, that they got, yeah, they got more than me. I'm sick. <laughs> I, I, I might, might have, have 500. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) See, we're not all like you, John. We don't sell everything every week. (laughs) All right, all right, Lonnie. Of 500, how many of those are air filters? No, those are listed. And I sold sold one this morning. So I'm going to drink to that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Um, we all can't be like you, John. Oh, my goodness. Grandma wrinkles. Oh, I'm sorry, Dwayne. (laughs) No, go ahead. You're fine. I, was, I was just going to say, Grandma Wrinkle says I could start my own Goodwill store. That sounds like me. I think I could too. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Cr- Krillin says he has a thousand unlisted pieces at least. Oh my gosh. Wow. And now, I, I, don't, I don't do as much eBay as you guys do. Like, my eBay store usually has like 75 or 100 items. So I think right now I've got maybe 15 things I picked up over the weekend that I need to list. Yeah, see, everybody's in there saying, uh, the resale killers say over 2,000 pieces. Wow. Um, Speed Trap Collectible says I have several thousand pieces to list. So, <laughs> I mean, and then uh, On the Roads Again says I felt bad for being one 16-gallon tote behind. <laughs> no, you got nothing. <laughs> You're doing well if that's all you have. So, one I can't the- really – oh, go ahead, Lonnie. No, go ahead. Go ahead, John, because I have a little, oh. another little point I want to get into. Okay, yeah, I was just going to say I can't relate to having hundreds or thousands of items, but I would imagine if I did have that and I, and I wanted it by October 1st, I would just break it down. Like, okay, that's 60 days. If I've got 600 items, then break it down to 10 items a day. That way it maybe isn't so daunting and you can just kind of chip away at it. Well, I, I think it kind of becomes um, – an issue like in the summer sort like if you, if you source garage sales a lot in the summer, you are going to be bringing in way more stuff than you're selling. It's just the way it is, yeah. you know? And then when the winter comes, your sourcing is going to just go to a drip basically. And you're going to be listing from your uh, death piles or death room or death shelves or whatever it is. Death so, house. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's true. Like I've done it, a couple years in a row, like the sourcing just dries up like December, January, February. And I'm pulling from my, from my back stock, you know, that's what I'm listing from. So it's kind of a natural uh, squirrel nut type of thing. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You, you buy when you can buy and you sell when you can sell. And, and most of the time they're not at the same time. But, you know, one of the things I was thinking about, is that, you know, one of the, like right now you hear from a lot of people that sales are slow and mine are down a little bit, not a lot, not as much as like pure clothing sellers, but I'm down probably about 20% right now. Um, And I think the important thing to do coming into Q4 is if you can to be patient and don't slash prices right, right now would be the most Horrible time to slash prices to get sales because if you held on to that product, you could get top dollar a couple of months from now. So I, I think that's that's the place where you can really make some mistakes unless you just have to have cash flow. And if you need cash, you need cash. You know, I understand. But if you can hold out and wait until the sales are better, then you should keep your prices up, I think. Yeah, I agree. That's, that's the you know this the whole stock market idea is when you're losing money in the stock market that's not the time to sell out that's the time to buy and and it's so counterintuitive you know because it's like oh my god everybody's losing money but that's when you want to buy is because the the price is going down you want to catch it at the low 
Whitney Yarbear is asking if she can put her multi-level marketing direct sales hat on. What does that mean, John? That, that I don't sounds... know. <laughs> he's, he's just rubbing his eyes like, oh my gosh, what did I do? <laughs> I, I got to say that sounds a little spammy, a little scammy. And a little spammy. <laughs> now I'm curious. I want to hear what she has to say about in that regard of multi-level marketing. Yeah, I want to hear this too. Yeah. Her and I are kind of the same. We're we're always like, you know, thinking outside the box and different things of like different ways to do stuff. You know, like I'll I'll constantly pitch her ideas for the business. Like, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And you know, sometimes she'll be like, "That's really stupid," or "Oh yeah, that's a good idea." If you just kind of tweak it like this. Okay, here here she goes. Summer will always be slow in MLM direct sales and reselling. It sounds like. Okay, I agree with that so far. So budget wisely when you're selling hardcore during November, December, and then use that when your sales are slow, low in the summer. Yes, absolutely. That makes sense. Yeah, definitely. We all sell used stuff here, right? Like none yeah. of us are really buying a lot of new stuff for the most part. I've got 30 new baby sleep sound machines right now that I'm sitting on. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've had a day in the life of Stephen Steph resale killers, though, because I've sold about 15 of those things in the last 24 hours. Nice. All on uh, Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, first world problems. Yeah, well, 10 bucks a pop, but still, yeah, it adds up. Man, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've been um, getting a lot of motivation from Stephen Steph resale killers. Like, man, that that channel name is so hard to uh, so long, but I've been getting a lot of motivation from Stephen <laughs> and Steph. Because um, they've kind of challenged me to do more local sales. And guys, I did a sale Thursday on Facebook, I think. I did a sale Friday on Let Go. And then I did another sale yesterday. I did like 200 in sales in three days. Wow. On awesome. local apps. And they are kind of, they're not holding me accountable, but they're kind of lighting a fire into my butt. So it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. Is it something you enjoy? I mean, do you enjoy doing the local game? And no, it I hate it. Yeah. Oh, it, I freaking hate it. But I, I'll tell you what I do like. I the like, money. I like, yeah, I like the cash, getting the cash in my hand. And I also like, like, it, it feels kind of empty almost because I'm like, okay, here's your thing. They hand me the money. I have the money. And I'm like, wait, I don't have to ship. Wait, there's no returns. Wait, I don't have to pay fees. There's got to be something else. But, it's like, no, it's over, dude. Go on to the next one. You know? Yeah. It's kind of cool. Anticlimactic, huh? So I'd say, uh oh. <laughs> God, they don't have a whole lot more hassle and bullshit to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the drama, damn it? <laughs> but yeah, I mean it, it it's working out good. It's not good for all products though. But um I, I kind of opened up my sourcing because of it, you know, you can get bigger, bulkier things that wouldn't go well on eBay and uh, it's sure. working out. Right. Now that you have that bigger storage unit, you'll be able to do bigger items for that as well. Right. Yes, absolutely. That's one of the, that's another thing that I did in preparation for Q4. Um, my 10 by 10 unit, it was like packed. Uh, I couldn't have like a section for stuff that's listed a section for ink, kind of like John does with his warehouse. Mm -hmm. He has like, John, what you're split up into like what, three or four, areas yeah right now it's like six or seven um we've got like current auction previous auction the next auction i've got a photo area we have a staging area we've got sold items and we've got this massive pile of shit that <laughs> is mine and whitney's <laughs> yeah that we're just waiting to move into the new house <laughs> Yep, six slash seven is the Yarberry Home Storage Unit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yep, it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then I just picked up this patio furniture, and now it's even bigger. Hey, Chris just joined us. What's up, buddy? Hey, test, test, one, two. Could you guys hear me? See me okay? Yeah, I'm a Charlie, man. How's it going, Chris? Woohoo! Hey, how's it going? Hey, there's Angie, Andy too. too. Yeah, now we're a six pack. Oh, right. All right. <laughs> are these guys hacking in? How are they getting in here? What's, what's going on here? 
Angie, what you drinking? Uh, Power Eight Zero. Mm. <laughs> Cheers, Angie. You're gonna have to drink a lot of those to get a buzz. <laughs> Some vodka in there. <laughs> so uh, what's going on, guys? We're talking uh, fourth quarter prep. Oh, excellent. <laughs> I got my uh, Jose Cuervo Bartles and James crap. That the only thing that was in the refrigerator. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> what is that like a flavored malt beverage kind of thing? Yeah, it's one of those things that you don't want to be caught dead in in like a real bar. <laughs> I've never seen that. Although you've got more eyes on you here than you would at a real bar. So. Oh, I know. It's so yeah. good. So now you're, now. I, I literally had to set. I literally had John. Thanks for the invite. I literally had to like set this whole whole thing up in like five minutes. Oh whole, man. The whole thing. <laughs> Sorry for the late notice. No, it's cool. I'm glad to be here. I've, I've really enjoyed your guys' uh, six-pack shows. They're really awesome. So it's a privilege to be here. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Yeah, yeah. thanks, bud. Happy to have you. Um, you too, Angie. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Angie. Uh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Angie, I got to ask you, what um, what are you doing or what will you be doing to prepare for the fourth quarter? Um, I'm just going to list List, 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 as much as I can. That's probably um, the best thing to do. And I'm going to try to diversify from the jewelry. Hmm. What else might you be listing? Really? I'm going to go into, um, you know, more of my collectibles. Um, I remember last year, uh, a good, a good portion of my sales around Christmas time were collectible things. You know, like jewelry boxes or, um. Like little trinkets, yeah. Christmas themed things and you know things like that. So, yeah. Angie, so, how much could you say your your jewelry? How how high? How much higher are your, your jewelry sales during like fourth quarter? Mm -hmm. Like, are they like twice as much or three times as much? It seems like you would do really well. Um, at least three times as much. Oh wow! No, maybe more. Wow. Yeah. So now you say you're going to diversify. Are you going to stay diversified after you, you know, do it this qu fourth quarter, and then, you know, continue flowing it through next year? Continue with your collectibles, or, or do you only do it for fourth quarter? I'll probably only do it for four fourth quarter because I just have so much jewelry. That. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I know what you mean. Just a lot of of uh, inventory to to get through. So uh, I'm going to need to focus on my jewelry. I'm going to put you on the spot here, since we've already looked at everybody else's uh, death piles. How many unlisted items do you have? Let me see. You Five thousand, six thousand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ah, hey. uh, gee, I, I. Jewelry's kind of, you know, jewelry you're going to get up in amounts, right? So uh, I, that, that sounds a lot like a, an explanation. I just wanted a number. <laughs> 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 I'm just teasing you. We were just, uh, we were comparing because uh, John was astounded that, you know, people were saying, you know, thousands and, and 500 and, you know, and uh, I was like, well, most people are up, are probably around between five and a thousand, 500 and a thousand pieces yeah, you know, if you if, you're, uh, if you do a lot of volume, like uh, mm -hmm. Lonnie said, you, you collect a lot in the summer uh, that you don't get listed. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, what about now? Your name is. Oh, go ahead. Lonnie. And I was just gonna say, here's the deal, though. If Angie has 500 items that aren't listed, they probably fit in a 12 by 12 by 12 box. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> 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 and what about now? Your name is Chris, correct? Yes. I've never met you. Yeah, I'm Chris. Uh, Chris Wayne, how are you? Good. How are you guys? I, I okay. it's funny because I I know all you guys, but I've never met any of you guys. It's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> so so, how much is your backlog? Um, I I don't know. I have boxes of stuff. Like I just moved, so I was finding stuff that I had put away for like 20 years. So how about that? 20 years yeah. <laughs> piles over here. Yeah. Chris, I gotta ask, buddy. Are those? 
little bears what's on your flag oh <laughs> um some of, like most of my mo most of my backgrounds are like art that i've done over the last past 20 years this was american flag made out of uh spray paint and their their vinylmation figures disney comes makes oh, these little figures okay. and what i did is i took uh an ice that they make an ice cube tray and i filled it with resin and then cast them and then glued them uh, mounted them all to the flag and Holy the flags God. The flag's actually made out of uh, old Disney comic books. That's wow. awesome. That's, that's crazy, big. man. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's impressive. Very cool. I am so totally not creative like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been doing this stuff for years, and like we moved, so I was thinking like the American flag thing is probably going to be like uh, one of the main backgrounds I use for the rest of the year until I figure something out. What kind of items do you sell mainly? Uh, I sell mostly like collectibles and hard goods. Okay. I, I don't do clothes. I do. The thing is I do this part time as a hobby and it's always been part time as a hobby because I have a, a, a great full time job and stuff like that. So, um, I've been doing, e I've been doing eBay since the very beginning. eBay started in 1995. Wow. And, uh, just been off and on and I've been around, I've been around the block for sure. Awesome. I'm with you, buddy. I got a full time job that I enjoy too. So yeah, I'm the cool. I'm the part timer. <laughs> what do you What do you do, Dwayne? Uh, I'm a, I run a calibration lab for uh, Tektronics. So oh, okay, testing test equipment. Cool. So I don't know about you guys, but we were talking about kind of death piles and things like that. So I'm guilty of listing my better items first. And then the cheaper, you know, less desirable items, I just kind of like, oh, yeah, I'll get to that later. But if I know I've got something that's going to sell quick for 100 or 200 bucks, I list that thing immediately. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the smart way to do it, right? Then yeah. you can roll that money and buy more. So, yeah, it, it does end up where you have a whole bunch of junk <laughs> that you don't want to list. Yeah. <laughs> that's where I'm at, too. I think I wouldn't be surprised if there's a lot of people that do that because I'm guilty of that for sure you're guilty of doing something smart. I mean, <laughs> it would be really dumb to have piles of high, high price, high end stuff sitting there while you're slaving away on the lower end shit, right? That would Absolutely. not be ideal. Absolutely. All right, guys, I got a sale. Oh, man. What is that? It's a uh, polo. I sold a shirt. Can you believe that? You're a clothing seller now? Is that your first one ever? <laughs> no, I've sold a few. Remember that big haul I bought? Uh, oh, yeah like maybe a month ago that's from that so everybody drink up didn't you get a bunch of foot joy stuff and other uh yeah i got like a little bit of everything okay Some i gotta shoes. go get my I sold pretty much all those shoes oh wow yeah wait fireball going down in the hole that's oh. cool. hey i'm waiting for, wait for you buddy come on i gotta go Where's get yours? i gotta go get my uh oh, man my beer y'all go ahead i got i got a i got a low ball offer does that count for anything Hey, no. yeah. <laughs> if you take it, if you take it, it's a sale. But if you don't take it, we don't drink. No, lowball offers seem to be like uh, every day, twenty times a day. <sighs> okay. See, I can drink beer, but I can't. I can't pound the beers anymore. I'm getting too fat, so <laughs> I get for that. So. Um, what was I going to say? Um, I don't know. I don't know, but I'd be a millionaire if I was able to guess. <laughs> you know what I want to talk about, guys? Me too. Now, since Dwayne is at a loss for words for the first time ever. <laughs> That's not even. even. <laughs> I, I want to talk about these mystery boxes. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Tanya, tell now, us about your, start, your boxes of mystery, Tanya. <laughs> Okay, so I'm so excited. Um, I sold another one this evening, but a large size. So I have no idea what I'm going to put in it. I'll have to figure that out in the morning, but um, I'll make a video while I'm doing it and show you guys what I'm going to put in it. But yeah, I decided not to list any on eBay. I mean, you can do it. There are ways around it, but um, I'm just not willing to, to risk my account to do that. However, it is totally legal on Etsy. So if you go look on Etsy and you type in mystery box, uh, the search results will come back with a ton. So 
Yeah, yesterday, was it yesterday? I can't even remember. Anyway, I sold a small, small size. And then I adjusted the listing to where the customer could order like size small, medium, or large. And <clears throat> so a large one sold a couple hours ago, but I cannot, and if anybody knows, please message me and let me know. I can't figure out on Etsy how to adjust the shipping for the size of the box. So the person who bought the large size box, they're only paying $3.50 shipping because I can't figure it out. I think you know that's. The, that, I think you? it's. A, I think it's the drop down. The drop down menu where you can like select different sizes and things like that. I think you can adjust the shipping rate like that also. Per size that they choose, you mean? Yeah. So you use that instead of so like you set your parameter as small, medium, and large, and and it should adjust the shipping. But you have to go in there when you set up your 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 listing to to do that. Yeah, I've got to figure that out tonight. Yeah, because if I sell, you know, too many more, I could be losing money, right? I, I have a question: Are you using priority boxes to do that, or <laughs> I haven't even got flat, that far flat yet. Rate? Like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping you, you you said small, medium, large, which is perfect. You got your five dollar box, your uh, twelve dollar box, and your seventeen something box. So that's what I thought you were doing. Yeah, um, the I think I'm, I have the small set at nine ninety nine, the medium sixteen ninety nine, and then the large twenty four ninety nine. But um, yeah, I showed I made a video what I put in the small box, and so I guess I'm just going to kind of take uh, note of that, like write it down everything that I put, and I guess I'm just going to triple that for the large box. I mean, what do you guys think? I have a ton of inventory because I buy the jewelry jars, so. Um, you know, getting jewelry out to ship is, is uh, getting it gathered up is not going to be a problem for me. And and somebody commented on one of my videos today and they said, is it really worth it? But to me, I'm having fun. It's a way for me to build up my Etsy feedback. And it's a good way, good fun way to um, get rid of some of that excess inventory. So Absolutely. Tanya, Carol T has a question in the chat uh, or a comment, I guess. I thought mystery was I thought mystery was okay in the everything else category on eBay. They must have changed that. Can you just give a rundown of the policy? We've all re kind of read the right. policy lately, but can you just describe it in layman's terms? Okay, sure. Now, Diesel Engine Freak, he has something to say about this, and it's also noted in the uh, policy on eBay as well. But you have to fill in the item specifics. If you fill that in, your listing should go through fine. So, like, for example, uh, you could say that you're selling a mystery box of clothes. Well, you've pretty much already identified what you're selling, but you don't have to give item specifics, I guess, for example, like maybe the size or the color um, that you're going to be. Brand? You don't even have to say, yeah. like, the brand or anything like that? I think as long as you basically, d d you know, describe and fill out the item specifics, like Diesel Engine Freak said, you should be fine. But, again, um, I've had my eBay account for a long time and I'm just yes. not willing. And if I ever did try it on eBay, it would definitely be on, on a, on another eBay account that I have, not my main one. Um, but I'm what's, having fun with Etsy. I don't feel the new need to mess with eBay so much. What's the name of the policy? Like if somebody wanted to like Google that, what was it like miss sub, get, uh, box, chance listings of chance or something like that? Well, if you go join my uh, reseller group on Facebook, it's called Third Coast Resellers and Beyond. I posted that policy there okay, if you good. want to go check that out. Good deal. Because I see Iron Front in the chat uh, talking about the eBay policy. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, for sure, before you do anything like this, because it's kind of, I mean, it's, so, it's right on the edge, right? Yeah, and if you don't definitely. do it right, you can really screw yourself. Mm -hmm. So read the policy with your own two eyes and make your own decisions because ultimately it's going to fall on you anyway. So, right. So Andy, YouTube. Andy, do you think that you'll list some mystery boxes? I do. I, I have like four words for you right now. Shut for the front door. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I was scared there for a second. I, I know. I know. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> you sold your thing. You sold an, a, a large one already. I That's know. Crazy. I'm so excited. Okay, I have a question though. Okay. What did you? Um, what category did you put in? Vintage? Because everything in your box would have to be vintage. Well, that's the thing. After I sold the first one, I started thinking, well, what if they think all this jewelry is going to be new? So I went in and quickly added in the description box. You know, some pieces might be pre-loved. So, um, 
definitely. I think that I put it under um, handmade, right? Because I'm I'm putting it together, and um, I think that's how I did it. I think I made a video about how I listed it. If it's handmade, it has to be handmade by you. Well, I might have to go in and adjust that. Yeah, there's. I mean, they have Etsy has you know policies too, <laughs> so. Right going to have to go in and see what their policy is on those. Maybe they have a policy on eBay, you know. I, I don't know. I haven't looked it up yet. But, uh, right. Well, like I said, I, I'm i not 100% certain of all the exact rules. Um, yeah, this we is need my to go first look time. Under, yeah. Look under Etsy's, like, like bring up one of the mystery boxes that someone else has listed and see what category they have theirs under. Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, look look at several and see, you know, how, how others are doing theirs. Um, yeah. Not just theirs are right either, but you know, yeah. When we finish the show, I'm gonna have to go in and change some things up. Definitely. Yeah. You guys so, want to hear a funny story? I'm sorry, sure. Lonnie. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead it was, it was a funny story about the mystery thing. Uh, last night I was listing some baseball cards that I found in, uh, my move. And there was boxes of stuff, and I, I, you know, I, I didn't really know what it was, so I was just like, oh, it's like I'll just put a mystery thing, and I didn't even realize that it was a policy, so they kicked it back, that oh, I couldn't, no. I, I couldn't use the keyword mystery, in the title or the script, well, in the title, so I had to change it. So I, I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah. Good old eBay. <laughs> now I'm logging in right now. I guess you're saying someone wants to wants me in chat or something. Yeah, so um, guys, if you've not already subbed to Angie and Chris, definitely go check out their channels. Angie's is Treasured Vintage, and Chris is Thrift Shop Hustler. Uh, and Chad, uh, Chris, I think if you put something in the chat, they can probably you yeah. know, just go right to your channel. I'm going to do that right now. I know Angie's already in the chat. So, What channel are you guys streaming from right now? Good Used Goods. That's Jory's channel, and you missed it at the beginning of the show. He had a family emergency, so... Oh, you couldn't join us tonight. Hope everything's okay. Yeah, we don't know yet, but uh, he'll keep us informed, hopefully. Okay, he was okay. he was nice enough to give John the keys to the channel so we wouldn't have to <laughs> change yeah. the links and all that. So yeah, that, was yeah, that would have, that would have been a big bad hustle there, trying to get everybody <laughs> directed back to a different channel. So yeah, he definitely helped us out there. So the other topic we kind of you know, we're going to touch on tonight is bulk buying. Um, what have you guys done as far as buying in bulk? Has it helped you? Okay. So I'll, I'll go first. Um, I haven't really talked about it, but I made a bulk buy of denim, uh, used denim and, uh, basically a wholesale order, I guess you would call it, uh, of, of used use clothing and um that that's that's something that's kind of interesting because i'm paying a little more than i would normally pay uh like at yard sales and stuff like that i can't buy denim at thrift stores it's too expensive it's like 549 a pair of jeans yeah i think it's like seven something at goodwill yeah wow. here it's like five something so and if it's like a, a designer brand, they might even price it higher. They'll put it in a you know, different section. So um, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying my first load of that. If it goes well, I'll buy more. I mean, the, the negative part is I pay a little more than I do at yard sales. The positive part, it's coming right to my doorstep. So I don't have to do anything as far as the sourcing side goes. And, uh, man, jeans are really easy to list and – uh, pack and ship and all that stuff. So I'm hoping it goes well. That's really the only bulk buying I've done lately, though. Mostly I'm onesie and twosie. Oh, I don't believe you. I, I know for a fact that you bought a bunch of filters. Yeah, but that's been a couple months ago. I'm talking about lately. <laughs> filters, <laughs> blankets. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. The bulk. No, if, they're, if, if the stuff is there, I'll buy it, you know, for sure. If it's, you know. I'm so not when you afraid. say bulk, how much how much bulk are you talking? I mean, is it by poundage or by by uh, number? I bought fifty pieces. Oh, okay. So it's not a lot. I, if it goes well, I might buy a hundred next time. You know, so sure, sure. No, no I understand. That's great. Um, Brian's saying, Lonnie, can you specify the brands you want? 
Uh, depends. Depends on how much you want to pay. Like if you specify the brands, uh, then you're going to pay a little more, right? Yeah. Um, unless the, unless you're specifying uh, Fate of Glory, then you might pay less. <laughs> so, <laughs> but if you want nothing but Levi, you might pay, you know, five bucks a pair. So I don't, I'm not sure. You know, I just said, send me whatever. And uh, it's already curated, supposed to be all be sellable eBay inventory from somebody I trust. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Nice. Yeah. We shall see how it goes. Oh, look, Mrs. Garage Flips is here. Hey, Candace. Oh, uh, what's up, Candace? Keep it clean now. <laughs> Yep. So I feel like Andy and I buy in bulk with the jewelry drawers, right? You definitely do. I bought uh, on eBay. Um, it's been, I think it was last winter, I bought a super huge lot, uh, over 100, I think it was 150 pieces uh, on eBay and uh, paid a good bit for it. But I have since made my money and... Uh, I don't know if I've doubled my money, but I've, you know, I've recouped all my money and I, I'm in the profit. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's fun. It's a lot of fun doing it, doing that. It is fun. And I've bought in lots on eBay before, too, and, you know, had a really big score from one of them. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely uh, something to do, especially for those people who live in the remote areas and they don't really have access to the jewelry drawers. So that's a great way for them to also get some bulk jewelry. So have y'all sold jewelry jars or jewelry jars on eBay? <laughs> I'm sorry, on eBay or Etsy before? How well do those sell? Like if you make your own jar. Right. Let, let me touch on this real quick because personally for me over the years, I have never had luck with that. And I'm not I don't put them in jars. Like I'll put it in a bag and I'll say, I might say like, you know, 10 pounds of jewelry. And, uh, you, you know, I show pictures of the bag and all the jewelry that's in it, but I've never really had a lot of bids or it's never taken off for me. So uh, I feel honestly, like... Honestly, Tanya, you've got... You're closing in on 5,000 subs on YouTube. You And a lot of them like jewelry. You need to leverage that. Oh, well, yeah. I do. I do. I have a couple people I sell to by the pound. So, oh, really? Uh, yeah, repeat customers. Well, so... Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, definitely a uh, save some really good pieces for them. And um, yeah, I move it. I move it a ton of different ways. So it's definitely moving. Or what if you had a guest spot on every one of Dwayne's auctions? Like you just pop hey. in the jewelry jar time. She's the jewelry. I like that idea. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me up, Dwayne. That's genius. <laughs> good idea, Lonnie. <laughs> it's jewelry time. <laughs> jury, <laughs> jury I duty. See, I can see the oh, yeah. oh, and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of potential with this idea. Sure. sure. So I think the only bulk buying that I've ever done is is storage units, um, and it's not an individual piece. It's just you know a whole bunch of everything, um, and uh, it's not quite as. Uh, clean cut as your guys is uh, you know and so it, you know there's a lot more work involved and a lot of a lot of scrap and a lot of you know garbage and stuff but uh, yeah, I find that that's very the only time that I've ever done go ahead Chris no I was to say I find that very interesting like I don't have the time or the space for that but I find like the the the, where the storage units are like where the you know the million dollar paintings are hidden and the the gold <laughs> reserves and all that yeah. kind of crazy stuff seems to be in those in those storage units the big paydays. Yeah, I wish. I haven't found any of those. Uh, you know, <laughs> I haven't had any killer, you know, like really big things. So, and, and, you know, I, Silver Hair Stacker does a lot of those units too. And he, he has been pretty upfront about that. That really doesn't happen. Like the gold and like the cash and just the, you know, like Mona Lisa type paintings and all, you know, that doesn't really happen, you know? I don't it, know it, it hasn't, but it, it, Go ahead. I uh, was just going to say, yeah, it, it, I mean, for the most part, it's all bread and butter items. Um, once in a while, you'll find something, you know, something that's unique or something. But, yeah, I don't think you're finding, you know, $10,000 things because, um, you know, if you think about it logically, if I had something that's worth $10,000 and my yep. and, um, my 
storage unit's going under, I'm going to go get that. <laughs> if nothing else, just to pay back my bill, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, but I, it, I'm sure it does happen. It just is, doesn't happen very See, often. There's a lot. There's a lot of collectibles that appreciate in value over the years too. Of like today, with something that might be worth crap, ten years from now, it might be something that someone's willing to pay a thousand dollars for. So, you know, there's all there's always that kind of stuff. I'm wait, I'm waiting for someone to find a laptop full of Bitcoin in, in one of these things. <laughs> That'd be, <sweet. laughs> be like hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Bitcoins. Oh my gosh. I wouldn't even know how to search for it on a laptop. That's how dumb I am. Yeah, it's it, it actually it actually would take a lot of work. You would know you'd have to know what you're looking for for sure. Yeah. It's not like you turn it on and Bitcoin start falling out of the right. laptop. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. I've heard my kinetic kinetic energy talk about it, but I don't know what it is. It's growing. So basically, I, I don't know a lot about it, but it's sort of like Lonnie helped me. Oh, Lonnie's not there. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a digital currency, and there's a yeah, proof of work, right. and there's a whole digital ledger, and it's an open ledger, open source. Like there's a lot to it. It's not. It, it's pretty much digital currency, and uh, it's definitely you're you guys are definitely going to hear more about Bitcoin in the future. So. Oh yeah, for sure. And Tanya, at least from what I understand. Bitcoin is used a lot in the black market and like the dark web. So if you oh, want illegal things or if you want guns quicker or if you want like drugs, you can get a lot of that on the dark web with Bitcoin. And I think that's why the price of it has rise so much. I watched a documentary on it maybe a year and a half, two years ago, and somebody bought one Bitcoin for around six, seven hundred bucks, and now the value of it is about twenty four hundred dollars. It's actually so, it just reached three thousand the yeah, other day. It went, over, yeah. it went over three grand, yeah. It was a week ago. I looked at it. It was twenty four hundred. It went up like six hundred dollars. I was talking. Let's see, who was it? Uh, Resale Ronan uh, Paul. And he said uh, in January uh, uh, you could get a Bitcoin for about twelve hundred, and now they're at thir at three grand. So you're talking six months. It tripled. But they also just split too. They they just went Bitcoin just split into Bit Change and, and Bitcoin Bit Cash, or Bitcoin Cash. Sorry, yeah, sorry, that's what I meant. So um, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of. Uh, uh, you know, speculation going on. Who knows if it's going to, you know, stay there or if it's going to plummet. You want to <laughs> Well, the thing is when Bitcoin started in like 2008, 2009, the Bitcoins were worth like three cents each. There was a guy in 2009 and they actually have a holiday every year for this. Uh, there was a guy who used 10,000 Bitcoins to purchase a pizza. So <laughs> do the math on that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's like, a, what, I don't even know how to do the math. On that. It's like hundreds of thousands, hundreds of millions. Yeah. Yeah, that's not. That, that's just like when uh, Facebook was just starting up, and they wanted the mural painted in their office, right? Oh, and, I know this story. Yeah, they they gave the guy David they, they gave the guy name. an option. What's his name? Yeah, Facebook shares. David uh, Cho is the artist. Yeah. Okay. He was a pretty well known artist, I think, at the time, even. So uh, they they offered him either cash or stock. Stock options, and he chose the stock options. And I think they ended up being worth for doing this one job. Ended up like what, a hundred million, fifty? Oh million, my god, a, a, a hundred, a, a hundred million dollars worth of stock. Yes, that's amazing. Crazy. So smart. That's a great story too, Lonnie. I'm surprised you know about that story. That's a great story. Why are you? Oh, you just well, <laughs> no, because it's so it's such an underground story. Yeah. yeah, I've never heard it. I haven't heard it either. It's totally true, though. It's totally true. It's yeah, uh, no, yeah, no. See, like, it, yeah, the guy, the guy was a, the guy's a street artist in Los Angeles, and he did a bunch of murals. And uh, Zuckerberg asked him to do that, and he took the stock option, which was like genius. Yeah, what a lucky break for him. Yeah, yeah, but for every story like that, there's 500 people <laughs> that, that did the same kind of speculation, and you know, or. Right. Uh, we, yeah, they don't make the they don't make the news though. So <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just keep the faith. I got a question for everyone. This is probably a big interesting question. What is the most expensive thing that you guys ever found that you flipped? Like something that you paid super low for that you sold for super high. Not like something that you bought for a thousand and sold for two thousand. Like something you bought for a dollar and sold for like a thousand or more. A thousand or more. Yeah. Oh man. Raising the bar. I don't think I've bought anything for a dollar and sold it for a thousand. Yeah, I love those stories. Yeah. Is there anything that you guys you guys never found anything like that at garage sales or thrift stores or anything? The closest Not that I've got thousands. No. I got a bicycle I have. What'd you get, Dwayne? Um 
I uh, I bought a lot of test equipment, um, and um, it ended up being about I think I paid a buck and buck fifty a piece for the for the bulk item there back in the day, and I flipped it for twenty I think it was twenty two hundred dollars one piece wow. that went to Brazil. So, um, but that's the only good thing I've ever you know. Everything's been downhill front since then. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there's, there's so much stuff out there, guys. Like the thing is, what surprises me and what, what I do for my channel is I kind of expose everyone to things that no one's ever even heard of. And you can walk into a garage sale or a thrift store and you can if you know these certain paintings, these certain little knickknacks that most people would pass up, like there's so much of that stuff out there still that you, that people people are finding every day that pe uh, normal people are just passing up. Yeah, I need to tune into your channel more often. <laughs> Check those yeah, videos sure. out for sure. Yeah, he has a series called, I think it's Know Your Stuff, right? Yeah, it's a Know Your Stuff series. That's so I mean, pitchy. I love it. Yeah, and he yeah. features different items uh, to kind of give people, you know, the so like, So, like, yeah, cool. I, did, I, did, I did one on um, VHS, Disney VHSs, like Beanie Babies, so that people know, like, what is, is there an echo, or is that just me? Oh, no. So yeah, there's, there's, that's just basically some of the things I do on my channel is I dive deep into a subject. Yeah, that sounds like really good content for sure. No, that is good because there's beanie babies at every garage sale and we all know that, okay, there's the money laundering or whatever going on. So <laughs> most laundering. of the, or whatever it is. <laughs> okay, right, here's, right? A, here's a quick tip for everyone collecting that sees beanie babies. If you, if you see the beanie babies and they have the tie tag and they don't have the the yellow star on them those are the ones that are worth the money okay cool. so no star no yellow no star. yellow star so the ones that have the tie logo just the white tie logo are first and second generations now you're not going to be a millionaire but those are the ones that you want to buy for 50 cents 25 cents you know some of them are going to be worth hundreds of dollars not all of them but you know there's still wow. money in that stuff out there that's hmm. a great tip yeah heck yeah i remember my dad going to the mcdonald's stores when they had the beanie babies and we would go to every McDonald's store in the city and he would buy up all the miniature ones that they had and like the Happy Meals and he would flip them right away just because he's like, well, I can make my money, you know, I can make big money now. I'm just going to flip it instead of sitting on it. In hindsight, it was genius. To just yeah, those are, that was stores. a big thing. I think that was like around 19, I want to say like 98, 2000 or something that like that. That sounds about right, yeah, because yeah, I think I was about 15 or so. That, that's when eBay really, really took off and separated itself from mm -hmm. Yahoo auctions was the whole Beanie Baby thing. And uh, <laughs> You have been around for a while. Yeah. You remember the Yahoo auctions, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. like They still have Yahoo auctions in Japan. Here's, here's a pro tip for everyone. You can go on to Yahoo auctions in Japan find rare stuff and have it shipped to you and you flip it. Wow. Because there's people in Japan that don't know certain things that are American. You're just dropping all the knowledge tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So I guess in, when buying in bulk, you guys, in your experience, do you try to invest less than you normally would as opposed to like one item. You know what I mean? So like if you know you, you're getting one item and you think you could probably get 50, you might spend 15 or 20. But if you're buying a pallet of stuff and it's a mixture of items, are you more end of like 20, 25% of retail? Well, I mean, the as the volume goes up, the price goes down, right? I mean, that's how it works. That's Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, like I used to get these pallet auctions, and um, some of them would go for like a thousand bucks or more. But I guess I would try to hedge my bets, you know. And, and if I valued it at two thousand, I'd probably be in it for like six or seven hundred. That way, if some of the stuff was broken, you know, I'd still be okay. Most of the most of the electronics I ever buy, um, typically. I'm paying prices that are low enough to where if they are broken, I'm still making a little bit of money as parts only. You know, I mean, you can't always buy like that, but that's typically what I'm buying at. Uh, but, but to your question, I mean, like, I don't know, man, like if you buy one item and it's like 10 bucks, if I'm going to buy like a hundred of that item, I'm going to expect to pay more like $4. You know right. what I mean? Somewhere right. on that scale, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. 
for me, I, I buy bulk in a little different way. I don't buy new stuff. I usually buy collections of uh, collectibles, toys, DVD collections, Legos. I usually do that kind of stuff. So that kind of knowledge doesn't work too well in that area. It's usually for me, I look at something and then I know, I don't really know like a ballpark, but if the price sounds right in my head, then I know like, okay, this is, I'll just buy this and then deal with it later. So. But, but I mean, Chris, you are probably paying the yes, more you're buying, less, the, the less, less, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Way less. Yeah, your per item goes way down with bulk, or it's in theory it should. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like I bought a I bought a collection of DVDs that were like 1,200 DVDs, and I paid like maybe like two something for them. And in my head, I'm just like, that sounds about right, you know. And just a quick, you know, look at them, and okay, that's fine. Where do you move your DVDs? Where, where does it say it again? Where do you move them? Like, what platform do you sell them? Oh, on? I sell my DVDs on uh, eBay. Yeah. And, and I do that old trick, the the old uh, music CD trick, where I buy new cases, and then if this if the DVDs are new, um, I'll I'll repackage them and everything. And as long as the slips are are good and everything, you can sell them as like new if you just put a different case on it. And uh, you can also what was I gonna think um. Um, you can also refurbish some discs and things like that. But yeah. also, but for a disclaimer, if anyone refurbishes disc, please put that in your listing because you don't want that to fall back on you. Even though most people are never going to know, just 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 guard yourself and put that as a disclaimer. Right, and I've done that with um, CDs before too. Just bought the new CD, the jewel cases, you know. Yeah. And sold it as like new. It's amazing how much better a CD will present, you know, in a brand new case. Yeah, and it's a it's a hardcore niche. Like you can literally go. Um, all kinds of places, shopgoodwill.com, and you can literally buy hundreds of loose CDs that are scratched to hell, and no one wants them, and just have them refurbished, and it's some, it's a good side hustle for sure. Yeah, that's so, a good idea. So I have a GFJ Easy Pro. How do you refurb yours? You have your own machine, Chris? No, or what? no, I actually have a couple people that um, are on eBay, so I like pay up. I don't have a machine. I don't have the time for the operation i just don't and i also don't like the mess of the machines and all that i just don't have the time so i pay someone like a dollar and a quarter i think if i can do them in bulk which to me if i have a 20 or 30 40 dollar game i'll send them like 20 games and oh, yeah it's worth it bucks. it's yeah. worth it yeah i worked at a uh, like dvd cd store when those things were still around maybe like i don't know 12 13 years ago and we had this little bench grinder with these pads on the end and that's how we would buff out the scratches and then just like spray it you know with this cleaner afterwards and it would pretty much buff them all out yeah there's an eco pro that everyone uses that's amazing if i had the space and the money i would definitely get one of those have you guys heard of that before i've mm -hmm. heard of it yeah, yeah it's like it's like a thousand dollars twelve hundred dollars but it's definitely worth it if you're doing this full time wow yeah, I've got a uh, – the JFJ I have is like maybe $150 or so. Yeah. It, you don't get first-class results, but basically it'll get your disc to where it'll play. And whenever I do resurface a disc using that, I don't list it like new. I list it – I typically list everything in good condition because I don't find the prices vary that much anyway. People really – I mean, in the stuff like video game category, I don't find a big difference between good and very good price wise now if you're doing like new that's a whole different ball game right but you know and you kind of want to overproduce too like you know say it's uh, sure. very very good and they get it like new you know in their head yeah. that's uh, this yeah is a absolutely under promise over deliver isn't that what they say there you yep. go yeah yeah angie what about you what else other than jewelry have you bought in bulk in the past um I would say that's about it. Mostly jewelry. Do you try to get, you know, does the thrift stores ever do, if you buy like 10 jewelry jars, you get them at 25% <laughs> off or anything yeah. like that? I don't they think should. <laughs> yeah, they should. But I have my, um, my husband was in the Navy, so I have a military discount for Goodwill. So I, I do have that I can use. Um, but truthfully, I only ever bought bulk jewelry jars one time. I found nine of them at one time. So I was like, that was it. That's the only time I ever bought more than one. They don't have them around here. And uh, I I don't go to Goodwill very much, to tell you the truth. I have so much stuff here. 
is is what it is. So, I so where really do you where get. do you get your jewelry then? Most typically, or it's right here on this wall. <laughs> <laughs> but you had to get it somewhere. <laughs> it's like right over there. <laughs> uh, no, I I'm still working through the the couple big giant lots of more than a hundred pieces, you know, that I bought here last winter. I'm still working through that. And then the nine jewelry jars that I bought, still working through that. So, you know, right now I do have a surplus. Yeah. When you buy those jars, you literally have weeks, if not months of work uh, listing and exactly. photos and all that. Yeah, definitely. I saw Ronnie sent a picture that the jewelry jars in his Goodwill were like three dollars. Oh yeah, my gosh, that picture! Something really, those really those. cheap. Yeah, I've never, I've never seen them. I think when Tanya sh had it on her channel when I first got on YouTube, I'm like, "What are these things?" Because our Goodwills don't have those. <laughs> for uh, a pro tip for anyone, uh, Shop Goodwill has amazing jar jewelry jars and jewelry boxes for sale daily, like hundreds of them. So, plenty to go around there. How's their shipping on that, Chris? It's pretty, it's kind of high, but if you buy like a 14 pound box of jewelry, it's like a mystery box. It's fun. You know, it's like opening mm -hmm. up a pack of baseball cards. You never know what you're going to get. So, right. And I have shopped shopgoodwill.com for the jewelry bags or the, um, the boxes or whatever. And they, they can get kind of pricey. People definitely bid on them. Yeah. And I really believe it is unsearched when they say that. No, now, there are. People, there. Yeah. On eBay. I don't know if I would believe it. <laughs> But, yeah, it's here. Says, I've never done that before. Do they have? Do they have buy it nows or do you, is it all auction? It's all auction. There's some yeah. buy it nows on there. Um, a tip is just to go on there and just look. Yeah, I don't have to do that because they have small ones. They have small jars. They have huge boxes, like you know, uh, three pound boxes, twenty pound boxes. What's nice about the jewelry stuff on Shop Goodwill is they also um, will do like steampunk or like uh, I like Western jewelry, Southwest jewelry, like uh, turquoise and Indian stuff like that. So they actually will separate lots like that too. So yeah, that's, that's nice. yeah, and that's a, another great uh, tip for people who don't have access to the jars. So many people tell me so often that they don't have jewelry jars where they live. Mm -hmm. so that's another great tip. Uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to Jory who couldn't make it tonight. This is his channel that we're doing this on. It's Good Use Goods. If you guys are not already subbed to him, please sub to this channel. Jory knows a lot about electronics. He knows a lot about video games, and he's constantly making great videos and content. So please sub to his channel. I wonder if his wife's having a baby. No. Um, no, it just, no. No, it wasn't that. Oh, okay. I, I didn't hear, I only heard half of what you were saying about that. It was just a family emergency that, you know, he, he couldn't make the show. Okay. But so far, as far as we know, everything's, you know, Yeah, okay. hopefully, it, hopefully it's nothing serious. Yeah. Good. Although he did warn us that his wife might go into uh, <laughs> labor during one of these shows. So. Because yep. <laughs> yeah. he didn't get close. <laughs> Yeah, I think they're a couple, imagine? couple weeks away. <laughs> Five more minutes, honey. The show's almost over. <laughs> Hold that uh, one. Are, are, are y'all getting a lot of echo here? Yeah, uh, I, I hear it. Yeah, I hear it too. I hear it. Hey, Angie, do you have headphones you can plug in? I'm not, I'm not sure it's yours, but I think the rest of us have headphones. I think we're getting feedback through somebody's uh, mic. I can put little earbuds in. Will that help? Yeah, that'll mm -hmm. do it. Okay. Actually, now that John muted, I don't hear it anymore. Yeah, that's true. It's John. Way to go, John. <laughs> John, he's not even Apple uh, earplugs. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, John, it's you. Yeah. Whitney's watching it in the same room. Uh, Another pro tip. These uh, these Turtle Beach uh, P11s, they're like ten bucks, and they like they're 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 amazing. Is that what you're wearing right now, Chris? Yeah, they're P11s. They're like gaming headsets from like eight years ago, and they work great. 
Hey, is there any chance you could send me the link for that on Facebook? It's Turtle Beach. Uh, yeah, I can do that. It's Turtle Beach P11s. They're they're so, them. Yeah. See, the thing is, um, a lot of YouTubers they like to just use kind of like those Yeti mics, and they don't want to have bulky crap on their head. For me, I'm an old school gamer, so this is just natural for me to have a headset on. I don't mind having headphones on, but I do like having this. Yeah. Hey, we can't hear you now. <laughs> he, bro he broke it. I, I love having this thing I just broke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What is that? I had no idea you had that. What, this? Yeah. That's my, uh, that's my Audio Technica mic. ATR something or another. Uh, ATR 2100. That sounds fancy, man. Wow, you yeah. guys are so high tech. I just have, you know, my MacBook camera. Whatever on. works. Whatever works. Yeah. yeah. What, Andy? Should I just have it like all natural? Really? Yeah, me too. You're good, Angie. <laughs> I'm all natural. <laughs> yeah, whatever works. I, I used to just have nothing myself and just use the computer mic and stuff like that. Whatever works. I think the main thing when you first start on YouTube or any kind of project is just to do it. No matter if your if your gear sucks or not, Absolutely. just do it and get started. I've talked about this with John. Um, it doesn't matter if you kind of suck at first. Just actually, actually doing it and getting through the process, and then you can like piecemeal upgrade camera, mic, all your production value, editing, all that stuff. You can just upgrade. But the most important thing to do is do it. You know, right. Absolutely. That's where you start working out all the bugs. Right. And That's everything's good. priced so competitively now before, like in like 10 and 20 years ago, it used to cost so much to get nice headphones and, and a mic and all that. Now it's just, it's, it's reasonable. Yeah. I, I got, I think this mic was about $75. I'm using right now. I want to upgrade it, but I'm using a $15 webcam. It's like a C2 something. Logitech C270 or something like that. It, I, I bought. That's what I'm using too. <laughs> I, I bought the Japanese version. It's actually got a panda on it. <laughs> oh, I remember you. I remember Are you sure? Yeah. yeah, it was like cheaper than the American version, but it's the same thing. So I bought it, and then I picked these up. These are some Sennheiser microphone, uh, not microphones, headphones. I picked these up for like two ninety nine at a Goodwill. Right. So, That's. I was just gonna say my webcam I got from a Goodwill for five bucks. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I'm I mean, into mine at like nine dollars. So you know I'm I'm the big spender. Oh wait, no, you said yours was fifteen. So uh, you <laughs> outspent me. Sorry. <laughs> I I do want to get the C these, the uh, Logitech C920 though. What would you say, Dwayne? Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say these. I actually uh, I did a clean out of a. Uh, uh, Home automation place uh, a couple of years back, and I happened to find these headphones in there. So, and they're they're Logitech, pretty decent actually. So, is John having a baby? He like disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, he's got they, the bladder of a mouse. <laughs> they have they have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> right there he is. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, the host, he can wander around. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, you guys never oh I I I was never mind. I answered the or asked a question. Never mind. I don't know what I'm thinking. I think the alcohol is starting to kick in. <laughs> How many have you had? Uh three. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah but they're really. only like four ounces, man. Yeah, I saw well, that little you know it yeah, six ounce can. Yeah, six point eight <laughs> fluid ounces <laughs> at eight yeah. by volume. <laughs> Where is John's counter tonight? He doesn't have his counter up. It must be in storage because I haven't seen it since they've uh, temporarily moved to the in-laws. pretty sad. I'm just now noticing. Yeah, I just made a major move too. Let's talk about that actually for a second. For any, any eBayers that are moving, make sure that you label all your boxes correctly and that you take great inventory before you move because <laughs> there's going to be that thing that hasn't sold in like three years that someone's going to buy when you're moving. And then you're going to be like, I don't know where the hell this is. <laughs> yep. Moved here in, in February and I made sure that every box was marked well. So here's, here's what I did, Dwayne. I, uh, I, I, I photographed all every single box, all the stuff that I was putting in it as I was putting it in. And then I marked every box. So like I have 
photos and I have like notes on my phone because I can just talk into my phone and it types the notes. So I'd be like uh-huh. bo- box like one and then I'll say what's in it. Mm. And that, that helped out a lot, but there was still stuff that fell through the cracks. How many items do you have in your inventory, Chris? On my eBay page? Yeah. Uh, 400. Yeah, that's a good amount. Yeah, every time I, I try to go for 500, I sell a bunch of stuff. So I'm know, that way with the so 400. Weird. I can't seem to get to 400. <laughs> <laughs> like, I get, I, like, seriously, I almost get to 500 every time, and that's like my goal. And then all of a sudden, these sales are crazy. So, right. Yeah. Which is good. That's a good thing to have, a problem to yeah, have. Yeah, definitely. That's like, that's the whole point, right? <laughs> yeah. That's what we're doing it for. Yeah. <laughs> That's why, like, when people are shooting to have, I want to have X number of items in my store. I'm like, that's not the goal is to have more items. The goal is to have more friggin' sales. Right. See, well, all you have so to like do you tell, like, Lonnie, you just tell them, um, just uh, put your uh, put your store on you know, vacation and just list. Then you'll get there. Oh, okay, there the Echo is, yeah. uh, John, your new nickname is the Echo. <laughs> you still hear it? That is not a good. That is not a good yeah. nickname, by the way. <laughs> you still hear the echo? Yeah, I don't hear it anymore. Oh wait, barely. You know what happens is, um, when you use those those Apple earbuds, what happens is your the mic is so close to the ear. Low the lower the volume a little bit in your ear so that it doesn't get that reverberation, and see if that helps. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, because the mic's yeah, so I, close to the ears. It's good now. It's good. There you go. Is it better? Yep. Did you lower it? I did, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Much better. But yeah, so what I was saying, Lonnie, is just tell them to put their put their whole store store on vacation and then they can get to however many they want, right? <laughs> they may yeah. never sell anything, but <laughs> they can get as many listings as they want. I mean, dude, if I get up if I get up to ten thousand items, uh, I would freak out because that would be my shit if I ever got ten thousand items. That yeah, he went good place for me. Is- yeah, Lonnie's freezing up on us. Shit. <laughs> we heard that. Oh, the, freeze. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that comes through clear. <laughs> so yeah, I um uh, I only right. have I have like 140 items right now. But like you said, I, I'll list ten and sell six, you know, and so I'm just slowly creeping. And I do a lot of cross selling too. I'll put stuff on Amazon and Etsy and stuff like that. So, oh. Lonnie, I thought you were frozen. Oh, I was doing like a pose He's back. I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta screenshot this so I can show Lonnie. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna be like, I'm so on kryptonite, right? <laughs> oh man, I just another, got another sale. Yeah, I'm, just, oh, I'm dry. Yes. I gotta get another beer. I even checked my phone. Maybe I don't know. Drink up, Dwayne. <laughs> Why is it always me? Why does everybody pick on me? <laughs> I got a request for Farmville. Does that count for anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, if I must. <laughs> Drink up, Andy. Andy All right, here you guys go. Good job, sir. I'm going to have to go to the bathroom tonight. Hey, John, I really need to quit, quit having Whitney buy stuff from you, okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they say you're buying stuff from me on my eBay. So we have to drink. <laughs> yeah. She says, we don't have time for that. See, I didn't even know that was a thing. I already just drank all whatever I had. We all need to have, like, shot glasses with some hard stuff. Like small yes. shot glasses. Yes. Ready to go, yeah. Ready to go. Small. So they only come in one good size. That's a guy thing. What, shots? Um, <laughs> Angie has a question. Good number to start with on listings for newbies. I think we have like five items listed. I think you've got to just, you know, it depends on the person. How much time do you have to devote to it? If you've got, you know, five, 10 hours to devote to it a week, then yeah, you could probably do 25, 50 items. But if you've only got a couple hours then maybe stick it to like 25 or less. Those are always yeah. weird, weird questions too. And eBay will, well, they don't, they restrict the new sellers to only listing a certain number. Yeah. The first month or so, but then you can increase it. 
Yeah, that goes by pretty quick. Yeah, I think I think the answer to that question is just do what you feel is comfortable, and that it, it just keep it keep it fun. Don't don't over don't overwork yourself. Keep it fun. You know, at the, yeah. if you're exhausted, stop. You know, just list what you can and do it and do stuff that you like. Absolutely. As soon as it becomes a job, then it's no fun anymore, and then you might as well just work for somebody else. So, um, what, what, yeah, make keep it keep it fun. Well, here's the deal. Like, if if I have five, say, uh, Super NES consoles, those will all sell in a week. If I have five pairs of jeans, I may or may not sell one in a week. So, I mean, what kind of sales are you going for? What kind of stuff are you selling? I mean, it all it all depends. That's such a vague. Yeah, yeah that's a tough one. It? Yeah. If I'm I, selling I, like Mercedes Benz cars, you know, <laughs> and I only have five for sale, I can yeah. make bank, right? But yeah. <laughs> so okay. I mean, the question doesn't really mean much to me. I have a question for Angie. Uh, so get th so get this. So are you selling a bunch of cows on eBay? <laughs> Not yet. Uh, she hasn't got them. <laughs> right, but um. Uh, your dad will probably sell that B. That B? Did you look up that B, Angie? It was going for like a hundred and fifty dollars. Oh wow! And we both loved it. <laughs> I know that B was so cute. So if you guys don't know what we're talking about, last night on the MSP auction show, uh, Glenn the Swamp Picker was on, and he he auctioned off a ton of the um, cows. What are they called again? I'm drawing a blank. Cow on parade. Oh yeah, yes. cow cow oh, on, parade. on parade. Yeah. yeah. Is that like? 12. Is that like a uh, what's the word from that band Rage Against the Machines? Don't they have a what? song called yeah. like Gold Parade? Or parade. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know what you're talking about. They're like different themes. I think I saw an Astronaut one one time, and yeah, like he, actually, kind of. he, had the, he had the whole set of uh, Wizard of Oz. Oh and my gosh! Tanya, yes. Tanya got the witch. And then another guy, uh, Rolling Picker, who uh, is in the chat there, he bought the four, the you know, the lion, the tin man, the scarecrow, and the lion. So I thought he, got he more bought a couple. Four. Yeah, then yeah, he got yeah. more than that. I meant just of the the Wizard of Oz ones. So Mike says none of the cows are for sale. The cows are not for sale. Oh wow! <laughs> At least not yet. Ancient, I guess <laughs> they're so, super cute. I don't blame them. So Candace and I were eating lunch today. And we were talking about that auction, and I said, "You know what? After watching Glenn, <laughs> I am Even ready." You can do it. <laughs> I said, "I said I am ready." And can I said, "Candace, are you going to help me? Are you going to broadcast? Are you going to go on the show with me and help me curate this stuff? Because I don't want to put bad, just all guy stuff." So she said, "Yes, I'll, I'm going to help." She's. We're already planning out the items, Yay! Candace. Awesome. Candace is hyped oh up. God. I'm so, so excited. Be his book. Me too. And then I, uh, so I texted Dwayne and Dwayne was like, December, December, uh, December 18th or something, some kind of like never going to happen. <laughs> 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 and I'm like, dude, if somebody cancels, let me know. We'll fill in. All right. Chris, yeah. you need to get a show, uh, an auction lined up with Dwayne. What do you yeah. Have you ever watched what's, it? What's no, what's the deal? What do, what am I got to do? Okay. Uh, well, what we do is we just do a we do a live auction on eBay. I mean uh, on YouTube um, every Saturday night. Um, people, uh, different sellers bring about twenty items and they auction them off. Um, it's all done through the chat, um, and uh, you know we have a great time. I mean that's, that, that's the that's the best part of it is yeah, so much that's, fun. That's amazing. That's a great idea. Uh -oh. Very entertaining. You, need, you well. need to go back and watch Chris because yeah. like you're, you're thinking like. Uh, man, you're not going to get very good prices, but I haven't seen much that sold uh, under eBay going retail price. I think well, yeah, right. there's, not, there's not too many eyeballs when you really think about it, too. So you, you it doesn't matter though. You're getting yeah, more bitted up like crazy. Yeah, you guys keeps not, going up. Do you guys have one of those auctioneers like? <laughs> it's me. <laughs> 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 He's really good at it, though. He is. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm trying. It, it, it's it's actually not as easy as it looks. I, I thought, oh man, how yeah, hard could it be? Yeah. No, it's actually kind of a pain. <laughs> you know, you a great to, to watch the chat and everything. Yeah. So, so well, thank do you, you. I appreciate do you it. Do you like one item at a time and then have a certain time frame that it, they sell? 
Uh, it's just like done like a normal uh, live auction. You know, we okay. have one item, it's showed, there's questions asked, and then we start the bidding. Um, you know, bidding's uh, dollar increments until it gets to a certain point, then it goes up. But, um, and then as, it basically it, we call it as soon as the bidding stops. You know, we go going once, going twice, and sold. Um, uh, like, uh, for example, I'm, I'm, I'll give a number out because Chad's given it out a couple times. Um, Chad made about twenty two thousand forty nine dollars one night um yeah, and he gave half of it to charity <laughs> Correct. oh nice okay. no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> whatever yeah. and that's the thing is everybody sells different things and that's why it's so much fun is because like like glenn last night he had no idea that these cows that he had are gonna are gonna sell for I, he probably got five hundred dollars out of these cows yes. um, and that just wasn't what he was thinking it, those cows he said one of them he was saying, now this one has like dust on it. Now how long did he have those cows? <laughs> no, he bought them for he bought them the day before. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. see. I, I still didn't watch the beginning of the show yet. Right. So he probably said that at the beginning of the show. I missed the show too. But a lot of it. Box. Box. He did. He did. He did have a mystery box. Uh, I think it went for about one hundred twenty-five dollars. Wow. Um, I'm still waiting on my uh, Nintendo mystery box from Andy. I can't wait to get that. Uh, yeah, that you'll have to definitely do an, a live show opening of that. That'll be great. Oh yeah. But so anyway, Chris, so we do that, and uh, you know we have a good time. And, and most, the last couple of people have all donated, you know, part of the proceeds to a, a charity of their choice. Uh, John did uh, to uh, a fellow reseller that's having uh, that's daughter's having some troubles uh, with uh, cancer and such, um, and. Uh, it's just we have a great time. It's about two and a half hours long, and um, I think the let's see. I think I made the least amount of money because I was like the first one. I did my own stuff. Right. I think I made seventy bucks. No, that sounds and amazing. Then from, there, from there, it went <sighs> crazy. Yeah, Tanya's Tanya had like one of the bigger. Tanya had I don't know what she sold, but she sold like somewhere around five hundred or something like that, and that was like everybody's like. Wow, unbelievable. Yeah, crazy, right? <laughs> and then the next week it went like 2000. Yeah, that was crazy. No, and then what, what was yours, uh, John? You sold what, 1800 or something? Yeah, somewhere on there. Yep. Something like that. See, so, I mean, the, the problem for me is I wouldn't even know, I wouldn't even know what to pull for that. You know what I mean? Well, like, I, I wouldn't even know. If you watch some of the old shows, you'll kind of yeah, see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Vintage okay, stuff, that. unique stuff. Things like that. Yeah, basically that's what it is. It's it's neat stuff. It's right. you know your clothing doesn't sell. And we found that out. I mean, unless it's something special. And nothing adult you know, I mean, will sell either. Like yeah, nothing adult, you know, adult oh. oriented because uh, no you know, body it, stuff. It, Darn, it doesn't. Yeah, but you know, like uh, John sold the shirt he was wearing one night for what eighty yep. bucks, eighty five bucks, something like that. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it, and a lot of it is just because it's. You know, going to a charity—that's part of it. And and again, you'll get two people battling each other. Like Chad, Chad ends up <laughs> bidding against his wife, <laughs> and they, they said battle back and forth. And it, you know, they're in different rooms, but they're in the same house. So it's no, fun. that's awesome. Let's definitely schedule something like that. I'll, I'll I'll review some of the old videos and we'll talk for sure. Okay. Yeah, and sure. fair well, warning, people. Like I said, might... I'm, I'm basic. Oh, go ahead. I was just go gonna ahead. say, fair warning, people might try and pay you to break something that you're selling. Yeah, that's true. Yes, too. The smashing. <laughs> I paid Tanya to smash a bobblehead with a hammer, and it was the <laughs> that, best ten dollars I ever spent. Wow. Yeah, we we have a lot of fun, but I'm basically seriously I'm scheduling next year now. So yeah, yeah. Um, 2018. Why don't you yeah, pencil me in for something, and then we'll we can talk for sure. All right, any, all right. Any well, day. I'll. Uh, I'll get with you. The great thing about scheduling out that far, I feel, is that you have so much time to be acquiring things when you're at the garage sales and the thrift stores. It, it really kind of gives you uh, an edge, right? Because you have more time. Like I've already started, I'm doing a Halloween themed one in October and I've already got a box going of stuff. When I find something, I just throw it in there. Oh my God. I love Halloween stuff. Do you guys ever collect the Lamax stuff that they have at Michael's? Those little like villages and department 56 stuff like the halloween stuff for department 56 and lamax is so amazing okay i'll be on the lookout for it <laughs> yeah, yeah they're basically like little villages that light up and some of them have like animatronics and things like that they sell them at michael's okay 
I've seen the Christmas ones, but I've never come across the. Yeah, LED Department ones. 56 does them, and they they go for a good amount of money because they retire some of the sets. And on Michael's, like after Halloween, they sell them for like 75% off. So if you're into retail arbitrage, go to Michael's, start buying some of that old stock and just put it <laughs> away for a year or two, and it, it'll triple or quadruple in value. Mm, great smart, idea. Man. Nice. All right, guys, I've got to interrupt this for a second, okay? Uh -oh. Tanya is at 4,990 subscribers. Whoa. Whoa. She's Ten about more. to crash 5,000. There's 91 viewers right now, guys. I, I thought oh, she was so sweet. Thank you, John. Go subscribe to her. Let's crack 5,000 tonight for her. All right? Oh, Go yeah, sell some thrifty treasures. Thrifty treasures. I'll put it in the chat. <laughs> and I'm going to be doing a giveaway. Oh, nice. I think I'll make a, a YouTube channel for Desi, and then she can subscribe. Oh, Desi. yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know what? I bet she's going to crack 5,000 while we're still alive. That would be I, awesome. I wonder if it would be awesome. That would be cool. I, I am drinking to that. Anybody that's <laughs> watching, if you haven't subscribed to Thrifty Treasures, including oh you, Miss Garage Flips, <laughs> if you're watching still, then uh, please subscribe. Yeah, I, I subscribed to Tanya long ago. She was like one of the very first – uh, people resellers that I saw on YouTube. Me too. Oh, you're so sweet. I subscribe to you too. She's awesome. Oh. <laughs> I it's love you, man. Yes, I love you. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 uh, wow, that's 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 incredible. Five almost five thousand people watching you, Tanya. Doesn't that that's stress you out at all? Yeah, that <laughs> no, that's awesome. I think it's. I'm great. so thankful. Dwayne, yeah. Krillin wants to know if you've picked up a lot of subscribers since you started the auctions. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went from about um, I'm at 625 now, and it's been, what, four weeks? Five? No, six. So, yeah, I, I really skyrocketed. Um, it's kind of leveled out because I think the, the bulk of the people that uh, – um, you know, come to the auction or something or, or, or already subscribed. But yeah, it was a big, you know, big spike in the old uh, subscriber count. That's for sure. Good. Awesome. Hey, I had a sell. Really? Ooh, what did you sell? It is a, what is it? It's a FINA airplane collectible pin. <laughs> nice. A what? It, it's a like a pin? little pin, like a, you know, like like a brooch, but a pin. It's smaller. It's for $17? Like an Damn. Cool. Yeah, Did it come out of a jury well. jar? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Drink up. There you go. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Now, there's good money in lapel pins. I mean, there's so much. There's so many niches out there. For yeah. anyone that ever says they got nothing to sell or they can't find anything to sell or there's nothing to do, like there is a million niches out there. Like lapel pins and brooches, you can go knee deep in that stuff and make right. a good living. I agree. They're easy ships too. Yeah. That's what I started when I first started eBay. I didn't I only sold like Hot Wheels and baseball cars and things that were like super easy to ship. And it's a good place to start is, is selling is. small things. What is your Etsy store Say that again? What is your what is your Etsy store name? Mine? I, I think it's Haunted Collector or Evilos. I'm not sure. <laughs> He doesn't I'm even know. Collector? I don't even know. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, I'm like the most like, I don't care or whatever kind of guy you're ever going to meet with this stuff. You're like, how many, how much in sales did you have yesterday or, or this? I don't know. Like if I had to sell, I, I don't know. So do you sell paranormal items in your store? No, but that's a crazy niche though too. Like if you sell haunted dolls and things like that, that's weird. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah we, we know some people. I got to be honest. That. Wait. <laughs> let, let's look at this in the chat real quick, okay? Nine five four seven two pickers, aka Henry, uh, says thrifty treasures. You got a sold. So did oh, Henry did buy Henry? that from you? Henry, I guess I don't know. I'll have to look. But he bought something from me last week too. <laughs> oh, Thanks, wow. Henry. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to get us all drunk. Uh, Henry, you can buy some of my stuff, dude. Spread the love around. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> no, I don't. I honestly don't think I've ever sold anything while on the show. I think I'm like the only one that has not sold anything. I haven't. Well, you're, this is your first time. <laughs> yeah, no one buy anything from me. I'm too lazy to ship anything tonight. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we got a popular eBay cherry on the show here, Dwayne. What's that? Oh yeah, yeah. 
it'll happen someday. So, but Dwayne, how many things do you have listed? I'm 155. Oh wow, okay. yeah, that's a lot. Pretty good. No, 152. Sorry, I. I just like we were having talking about earlier, you know, I get up to about 160 and, you know, eight things sell. And so then, you know, I put another 10 on and eight more things sell. So I'm not complaining, but uh, it's just a slow, gradual climb. <laughs> so. On the roads again in the chat says they got 160 designer haunted men shirts. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. funny. <laughs> Does eBay not regulate the whole haunted thing? Can anybody just say anything is haunted? And I think if gonna... it's like a, I think if it's, it's like a Ouija board or a doll, it would probably work. But if you did like haunted pencils or, or something like that, I don't know if that works too well. I did a haunted clown and I didn't have any problems. Deb uh, pitching pesos told me to do haunted. And it finally worked, and yeah, no, no problems. It, I mean, how can they prove it's not it, haunted? Yeah, I've done right. my dolls. And it's not, or it is haunted. Dolls gone, but not. It never made it to where it was going, right? So it's still in the wind. <laughs> yeah, no, that stuff gonna... scares the hell out of me. <laughs> What'd you say, Angie? I'm gonna have a clown for for my show. Yeah, I've been on the. You know what? Actually, I will have a clown for my show. I already got it. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's a tease. Oh, boy. Yeah, what? and it's, it's something unusual. Like, you wouldn't think. It's not what you think. So. Just make sure that you're ready to kill it because somebody might want it <laughs> killed. I cannot kill a clown in my house. Like, what if, what if, I don't know. I don't know. Do what you, if it is haunted? Do you guys want to hear my haunted Please doll story? Haunted. Now, yeah. that you, now that you brought that up. When, sure. When I was a kid, I had one of those talking Pee Wee Herman dolls. You guys remember those from like 89 or 90? Yes. I know you are. What am I? Yeah, exactly. Like, so I was spending that at my, <laughs> I was spending that at my friend's house and he had one and it started talking in the middle of the night when we were laying in bed. No. And yes. It started going off by itself. So we were like, what the hell is this? You know, we, we just were kids and we're freaked out. So the next day we ended up like taking it out, throwing it in between two apartments and like just throwing like <laughs> Uh, like cleaner on it and paint and just oh everything just trying to destroy it. But yeah, I was I'm telling you, oh I'm telling you, man, I, I remember like 3 a.m. I had a Furby going off in the house. <laughs> and I, I'm, tell, I'm telling you guys, I went and I took the batteries out of the thing. Get back in bed. About 10 minutes later, I hear it again. No, you did not. <laughs> now I don't. I don't want to be the the skeptic here, Lonnie. But there's there's a thing called resistors, and they they hold. No, you talk um, about capacitors. Capacitors. <laughs> they, they, yeah. Resistors. I don't know what I'm talking about. The yeah, the the capacitors. They hold the extra energy. So maybe that's what it was. It could have been. It could have been. But they're evil. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> All right, guys. We've been going for about an hour and a half. So. We should probably wrap this up. Uh, does anybody have any parting words before we go off? I do. Hmm. So be sure and join us on Tuesday at oh, yeah. uh, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time on my channel. Lonnie and I are going to interview Steve and Steph, the resale killers, for part two. Sweet. That would be <laughs> fun. Yeah, they're so awesome. We couldn't fit it all into one show, so I'm looking forward <laughs> right? to that. <laughs> I know you, you, you even tried to lay down the law, Lonnie. You're like, okay, I got 25 questions. You I will know. Answer quickly, and, uh, and they're like, yeah, right. Dude, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really. <laughs> okay, Dwayne. Okay, Dwayne. You opened up a can there, buddy. Uh -oh. We got a little drama. Uh, you're going to criticize me. No. We're not even on your I think channel. It was funny. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm going to get you next auction. I'm going to criticize uh -oh. you. <laughs> it's on. No, I just thought it was funny that you said all that, and then they're just, and then you ended up having to do a part two anyway, because you know they, yeah. they you can't, you can't, con, you can't corral those two, man. They I mean, cannot really. be corralled. Not the killer. No, no, no. no. <laughs> they play by their own rules. Corral <laughs> <laughs> blood splatters. You can't corral any blood splatters. They just go where right. they go, right? That's yeah. right, Angie. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate Thanks it. it. Thanks for coming. Of course. Of course. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for joining us. You, Thanks, you, Chris. You know, what, you know what, though, guys? I, I'm thinking about the killers now. And, uh, man, <laughs> I'm so jealous of those guys because they have this cool shtick 
right? Like like the resell, like the serial killer. Like right. I don't I don't have a shtick. I don't have like some little backstory going like that I could always kind of fall back on, like ah, oh, we're gonna kill him or whatever. You know, I don't I'm so jealous. <laughs> that is so what smart. The yeah, like, they're very oh. clever people. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good. That was pretty good to for that. So. She's got the coolest hat ever. <laughs> Who me? Hell yeah, I do. You're wrong. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Andy, you don't patronize them. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you're not going to get a snow out of it. I have always liked that hat. Thank you, Angie. <laughs> Angie is my friend. <laughs> I have somebody make a negative comment about it every single video, and I don't. <laughs> I don't That's why you wear it. That's why you wear it. To get that comment. <laughs> you're right. I do. <laughs> we should good start night, reading all the comments good about night. the hats. <laughs> good night, guys. Good night. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye, thanks, Bye. guys.